Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Breaking news, divorce rocks the Trump family. Shocking new reports are coming in indicating that a major divorce is about to rock the Trump family. Daily Mail reported that sources close to Donald Trump Jr. and his wife Vanessa are saying that the couple is preparing to file for divorce. A source closer to the pair said that they have been living separate lives for quite some time. The problems have been there for a long time, the couple had hoped to stay together during the president's time in office, but it is getting harder to resolve their issues, said one source. He's never there. The couple have been married for 13 years and have five young children, K, Donald III, Spencer, Tristan, and Chloe. Donald Jr. and Vanessa have been spotted together less and less in the past year and have spent almost no time at Mar-a-Lago together during that time period. Donald Jr. recently spent two weeks in Palm Beach with his family, and though he posted many videos of himself with his kids on social media, Vanessa was not in any of them. Vanessa also did not attend the annual New Year's Eve gala, with Don Jr. instead taking his son Don III. Last month, Vanessa was hospitalized after she opened a letter addressed to her husband containing a mystery white powder. The powder turned out to be harmless, but it still left the family shaken. Sources have said that Vanessa is uncomfortable with the amount of attention the Trump family now receives. Vanessa is by nature is a very low-key person, and she is uncomfortable with the attention her family is getting now that Trumps are on the world stage. She is also worried for her kids particularly after she received the threatening letter containing the white powder, the source said. Page 6 reports that sources close to the pair have said that the two are leading separate lives, and have been for some time. The problems have been there for a long time, the couple had hoped to stay together during the president's time in office, but it is getting harder to resolve their issues, said one source. The two have been spotted together less and less in recent months and spent almost no time with one another over the holidays at Mar-a-Lago. Don Jr. posted a number of videos to social media during the two weeks that the pair were in Palm Beach which showed him with the couple's children but never Vanessa. Vanessa was also absent from one of the family dinners and did not attend the annual New Year's Eve gala, with Don Jr. instead taking his son Donnie. It was also his birthday the night. We will update you further as this story develops. HT Daily Mail Report, President Trump preparing to fire Jeff Sessions, there's just one catch. It's been a long time coming, and it looks like Trump is finally ready to hit the reset button at the Department of Justice. For months. We've heard that President Trump has been planning to fire Attorney General Jeff Sessions. His frustration with the former senator stems from Sessions recusing himself from the Russia investigation, for which Trump has never forgiven him. But, as we reported earlier today, Trump is on a rampage this week. He's already fired his Secretary of State and his right-hand man within the State Department. Gary Cohn left the White House last week only to be replaced by former Reagan official Larry Kudlow today. The tectonic plates in Trump world are shifting, and shifting fast. Trump seems been on completely shaking up his administration, and ousting Sessions may be the next step. Gabriel Sherman of Vanity Fair reports. Perhaps most consequential for Robert Mueller's investigation, sources said Trump has discussed a plan to fire Attorney General Jeff Sessions. According to two Republicans in regular contact with the White House, there have been talks that Trump could replace Sessions with EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt, who would not be recused from overseeing the Russia probe. Also, as an agency head and former state attorney general, Pruitt would presumably have a good shot at passing a Senate confirmation hearing. If this goes through, it would be yet another massive reform to Trump's cabinet and it would likely be one that Trump is very pleased with. There's just one problem with all of this. Gabriel Sherman is a connected reporter. But he's run this story more than once before. 
Just last week, he previewed what were to be many big resignations within the White House that were supposed to occur this week. But so far, none have to come to pass. Sherman reported that National Security Advisor H. R. McMaster and Chief of Staff John Kelly were on the chopping block. Yet they're still around. We know Trump is dissatisfied with Sessions. If he was planning to let him go, this week would be the time to do it. Should Trump fire Jeff Sessions? Unbelievable. Democratic mayor strikes a plea deal with prosecutors to avoid jail time, this is unfair. One of the greatest topics we have found in the world of Democrats is that the minute they are offered keys to any political power offered in the United States, they utilize that power to their advantage. Disregard each one of those campaign promises about helping the general population. It doesn't make a difference if a liberal is sworn into office on a city, state, district, or federal level. The power is simply excessively and it turns out to be simple for them to trust that they are exempt from the rules that everyone else follows. As a result of their hubris, corrupt Democrats discover no issue with taking citizen cash and treating it like their own. Furthermore, once any apex of morality is shaken, whatever is left of the ethical mountain is decimated. Take the instance of our story today. This Democratic leader stole $33,000 from her own particular city government and utilized it to take addings to Paris and further encourage her affair with one of her staff members. Yet, will she go to imprison for this like she should? Obviously not. Her scheming self could stay away from prison time in the event that she reported her resignation, because of a plea deal. Via Daily Caller Nashville Mayor Megan Berry pleaded guilty Tuesday to felony theft for spending more than $10,000 worth of government money, but will serve no time in jail. Berry had reportedly been working on negotiations with Nashville District Attorney Glenn Funk to face no prosecution if she were to resign from office. Instead of jail, Berry will serve three years of probation and agree to repay the city $11,000 in reimbursement fees although it was reported she spent nearly $33,000 of the government's money. The news comes as Tennessee Bureau of Investigation received information that Barry could have broken the law, prompting her to announce her resignation at a press conference Tuesday morning. Yet, is this extremely reasonable? Barry is acting like she is the victim, when she, actually, victimized her whole city. Surrendering her seat as chairman is nothing contrasted with sitting in prison and serving time like she should. Over that, she doesn't need to pay back the greater part of the funds she stole. Foul play upon unfairness has happened in the city of Nashville, and next to no is being done to consider this lady accountable. Ideally, the voters know precisely what to do next race cycle, vote in favor of the right and the genuinely moral individual the first run through a round. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comments section below. HC Daily Caller Socialist actor Sean Penn writes novel fantasizing about killing President Trump. Academy Award winning actor Sean Penn wants President Donald Trump dead. No joke. This isn't The Onion. How do we know? From downtrend. Like all Hollywood liberals douchebags, Sean Penn is no fan of Donald Trump. Recently the brooding actor, director called the president the enemy of mankind and every newborn child. With this level of contempt for Trump it gets downright disturbing that Penn just wrote a novel in which he fantasizes about assassinating the president. Don't worry, Penn is a liberal so this is not a threat but rather a healthy expression of his First Amendment rights. Last year Penn released an audiobook called Bob Honey Who Just Do Stuff Under the Pseudonym Pappy Pariah. He liked it so much that he expanded it and is releasing in written form using his own name. The basic deal is the main character, Bob Honey, is a dumb white blue-collar guy who voted for a president named Mr. Landlord who is supposed to represent Donald Trump. Bob Honey is a septic tank cleaner and part-time assassin who feels betrayed by the Trumpesque Mr. Landlord's broken promises. 
Honey ends up in a mental institution and writes a letter to the president, and this is where we see Sean Penn's not-so-hidden desires. Daily Mail has more. The book's main character, Bob Honey, is painted as a 55-year-old Southern Californian who gets angry at the news, despite not fully understanding it. Baby Boomer Honey tells readers of his neighbor's death by an out-of-control helicopter, his imaginary young girlfriend and a yellow Lives Matter march, referring to Aryan blondes, at the Republican National Convention. Throughout the novel, Honey is followed around by an investigative reporter, who he seems skeptical of. What a sick, sick man. Seek help, Sean. Now.